is important to share my experience as an Asian American. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I woke up feeling so amazing. I'm like totally recalibrated, reset after the holiday break. I'm excited to actually get into the groove of things and um, fall back into a normal routine. I just have been in this major slump for the past couple of months and stopped working out completely and let myself go. I gained seven to eight pounds. I'm not really feeling myself and it's definitely contributed to a lot of mental negativity that I've been carrying with me over the last couple of months. Lately, whenever I just look in the mirror, I'm like, yuck, I hate what I see. So. Enough sulking about it. I need to do something about it and pull myself together because no one will do that for me. I already feel like I'm so much more energized because I've, I've worked out for like the past four days, so. I'm gonna start eating healthier too. I actually saw a really cool recipe online and they were by Marion's Kitchen. She just posted a Bon Me lettuce wrap recipe that I really want to try. It fits within my diet, so I'm about to head to the grocery store to pick up some of the things that I need. I recently joined this new app called Clubhouse. It is unfortunately invite only, but it's a really interesting space. It's kind of like a group podcast, or I also like to say it's an audio Reddit. Like you can join these chat rooms that discuss a range of different topics. Sometimes it could get very career focused. Sometimes it's just about anything and everything. But I've been listening in on a lot of chat rooms talking about Korean American identity. This has actually been 
surprisingly one of my most requested topics to discuss in my videos but I've kind of just I don't know I never gave it the light because I was like I don't know what's so interesting about my story but these chat rooms in clubhouse really kind of shed some light onto why it is important to share my experience as an Asian American with the platform that I have. All right, I'm actually gonna sit down for this one. <laughs> I was born in Flushing, Queens, raised in Long Island. I went to school K through 12 in Long Island. And then as soon as I graduated high school, I moved back to Queens. Throughout my entire life, I juggled both the urban and suburban environments, so I was influenced by both and I understand both. My mom worked at a nail salon, my dad was in wholesale. I grew up in the basement of someone else's home in Long Island, so whenever people hear that I grew up in Long Island, they automatically assume that I grew up rich or that my family is rich, but that's completely not the case at all. My parents intentionally lived under shitty circumstances just to put me in better public schooling. And Long Island, if you don't know, is demographically very white. In my school, I was, I think, one of three Asian girls total in the entire class. When I was younger, I was like, I am going to assimilate as much as I could. Like, I was going to be white, okay? <laughs> but that meant conforming to all of the whiteness I saw around me. And because I assimilated so well, I was actually pretty popular in school. I was popular in school, yet so incredibly embarrassed of my background. I was embarrassed to be Asian and poor in a rich white neighborhood. People obviously found out I was Asian, couldn't hide that but I tried to conceal it as much as I could. And that came in the form of things like the meals I brought to lunch. If my meals ever required an explanation to my white friends, then it was a no. Like I cannot bring that to school. That is social suicide. My mom knew never to pack me Korean food for lunch. She knew damn well not to pack Korean food for lunch. I let her know. But the only Asian food that was okay to bring to school was leftover Chinese food because all the white girls did that too. But being poor was something I was a little bit better at hiding and that's something I tried to do um, more of. So whenever I had play dates or friends decide to hang out at someone's house, it was never my house. It always had to be someone else's house because I lived in a shitty basement. That's embarrassing. So I couldn't have my friends see that and see how I was living compared to their suburban million dollar homes with pools. And the moment that I dreaded every day was getting dropped off at school in my crusty old white Dodge Caravan. I was so embarrassed of that thing because everybody was pulling up in their like typical suburban SUVs, the Highlanders and even Escalades for the richer people. And I was the only one with the outdated Dodge Caravan. As soon as I got out of the car, I would just look down and scurry into the school building as fast as I could just to minimize the chance of anybody ever seeing me come out of that car. I also dragged my mom to uh, all of like the fancy department stores and the shops that all of my friends would go to to get their clothes because I had to look like them. I had to be them. Um, but this drove my mom nuts because she couldn't afford a lot of these items like she couldn't afford $150 Uggs for her 10 year old child or the $70 pair of yoga pants that everybody else was wearing but I was really adamant about that and I was like if I'm going to be accepted into this very white crowd then I have to look the part. I was too young to understand you know the financial circumstances that we were in and what that meant um, but in eighth grade my world changed. I moved to a new school that was still pretty white, but it was a much bigger school and there were a lot more Asians. The white people here were different and they weren't the people that I grew up with. Um, so I kind of just shut down and I was like, I'm not gonna fit in anywhere here. I kind of was a lone wolf throughout high school. So this is the part where I started 
hanging out in Queens a lot. I was drawn to how everybody in Queens struggled the way that I did. Everybody in Queens had that immigrant struggle that I could relate to. That's where I felt like I belonged the most. I felt normal just being in Queens. As I got older and the more comfortable I became with my Korean American identity, I started meeting a lot of people, a lot more Asian Americans, and I realized just how amazing some people were and the things that you know my peers and my mentors were doing. I was like, damn, you're Asian American like me, living in this very white world. I don't know, I was just so inspired by the cool people that I met. I met a lot of people in the arts, I met a lot of people in entertainment. We have a lot to push through and we have a lot to prove in our society, but I think it's just so important as Asian Americans to uplift each other rather than compete with each other because we're all just trying to leave our mark in this world and I'm just gonna leave off by saying that we all just need to help each other grow as an Asian American community and cheer for one another because we're all doing such great things and this is exactly what our immigrant parents came to America for.